and we are live with Spot Dodge, a live Nintendo podcast where every single week we react to the latest Nintendo news and talk about the games we are playing. This week's going to be a fun show mainly because we're sandwiched in between two Nintendo events with the Pokemon thing just happening last week and then Splatoon happening tomorrow. But before we get to talking all, all about that stuff, Let's, let's see who's here with me today, which is Greg Bargus, writer over at PC Invasion and streamer over at Dynamite Giraffe. How you doing, Greg? Right, I'm doing good. How are you? It's great to have you back. That, see, that was better than last time. That was better. <laughs> That's the type of energy I'm looking for when it comes to Greg, to, uh, Greg Bargus. And then we also yeah, have John Frischa, indie developer and managing editor over at The Escapist. How you doing, John? Ali G, would I even want to be anywhere else? <laughs> it's not like you were quietly yelling <laughs> sure and then lastly we have mary stowe social media manager and host here at destructoid how you doing mary i didn't fall asleep until three o'clock in the morning but i am here awesome yeah <laughs> so everyone's tired here today i know i know greg is and now mary um but yeah, this is going to be a good show. Um, and once again, if you're here, well, not once again, it's actually the first time I'm saying it, but if you're here and you like the show, please go follow us over on uh, Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. We're on a bunch of stuff now. Like, we finally got approved for, like, pretty much every podcast platform that's, that's like, popular. So please go follow us and give us a yep. review of five stars. That, that, that'd no be a excuse lot. not to listen to us. No excuse. Simple as that. And honestly, I think we have a pretty damn good show, I'll be honest, because I was not here last week, and I tuned in. I got to experience the show as a fan, and I was like, man, these are, these are some cool cats we got on this show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was, a, it was sure. a solid episode without me, and surprisingly long, given that there was no news at all last week, basically. A lot of speculation. Uh, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. And man, I'm kind of sad Brett's not here because I had so much crap to talk about him while he was here. And now I'm just going to have to save it all for next week. First topic of the week is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We finally got a deep dive into these games and some things surprised me. I have a list of things uh, that are like regarding these two games and we're going to go down them. And John and Greg, you're going to have to pretend to care. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm so ready. Lay all it right. on me, Brett. Tell me all about Pokemon. Hi. All right, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are going to have three stories. We currently know that one of them is the traditional eight gym leaders that you go through and you become the champion. But the big difference here is that you can do them in any order you want, which sounds really cool. I'm assuming the levels are just going to scale based on how many you've done, which I'm honestly surprised this is the first time this has ever happened because that seems not that difficult to do. But it's cool nonetheless. And the story is going to revolve around some type of treasure hunt. Like, that's what they called it in the trailer. So I was like, what does that really mean? It said, so they basically said there's a treasure hunt, and then you have the eight gym leaders, but they've been very secretive on what the other two stories are. And are they just as important as the main one, as, like, the gym leaders? That's what I'm curious about, because eight gym leaders alone, that's a full game right there. How meaty mm -hmm. is this game? Mary, what are your thoughts on all this stuff? I think, I'm with you, like, I think think it's cool that we're going to be able to do like the gym leaders in whatever order that we want and it is kind of surprising that it's taken this long in the pokemon game history for that to be an option um <laughs> i have other thoughts about like the treasure hunting thing i'm like are the pokemon the treasure like because they literally turn into jewels diamonds the yeah. shiny pokemon become actual shiny like that's another know. topic that we'll get to the shiny the the, the crystallized like pokemon thing yeah but uh yeah i i like this idea of having like an open world pokemon game i'm just curious if you'll be gated in certain areas because the pokemon's levels will be too high or if somehow like i was saying they they like all the all the levels based on what area you're in and how many gym leaders you've done they all just change they all just go up they scale to like where you're at um, I wouldn't mind it if it was kind of like how other games are, where it's like, okay, you're level 10, this guy's level 40, you can technically go try to fight him. It might take you a bit to, like, you know, take him yeah. down, and, like, you're going to need 20 million healing items, but it's achievable, <laughs> you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. Do you think John? if it happened that oh. way? Oh, no, I was just going to ask, do you think if it happened that way, that like okay you need to be level 40 to get to or play this gym leader 
against him. <clears throat> Do you think that like the first gym leader you choose to go against will be your level or a lower level and then it will just increase the others and like you can randomly select one or will there be like an initial order? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I could see them kind of maybe guiding you towards one just to like be like, okay, this is a gym. Like, I mean, there's lots of us who have played Pokemon mm -hmm. games before. This is going to be someone somewhere's first ever Pokemon experience. So yeah. I feel like there is going to be that kind of like, this is a gym battle. This is what you do. This is the vibe, what it's like. And then from there, it, I think it would be very like, okay, now you can go wherever you want. <laughs> Once you get mm -hmm. a feel for like the mechanics and how it is. Yeah, and I'm curious because they say there's three stories. What if you do the other two stories first and you haven't even started the first gym leader yet and you have like level 60 Pokemon? Like when you go to that first gym leader, are they going to have like level 60 Pokemon? Like that'd be kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was wondering. I, well, I think that's like a good, at least like, you know, it's not like the true like Breath of the Wild experience where you can just go in and, and fight Ganon right away and, and then explore everything else. But if they have some sort of like sliding scale like that, I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, John, it's, go ahead. Like it's well it's 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 kind of cool that they gave us a lot more information and it really just created like a ton more questions and I'm sure that was like 1 million percent a conscious move on the marketing team like this is part of like the drip feed like we're offering you all of this and we're hiding all of this but we're telling you this part. Mm -hmm. Uh so like I don't know it's actually just kind of fun in itself to speculate like yeah how they're going to handle like the gym gym leader progression and all that like I think my this is strictly my guess i think that if you're able to tackle gym leaders in any order which they said you can then i think it's going to be a case for like the order you do the gym leaders in will affect like how many pokemon you have to fight from that gym leader and which ones they'll use and mm -hmm. i also this is just my guess i my guess is that they won't directly level scale with you but rather it'll be like okay, you fought no gym leaders yet, so the Pokemon are going to be at these set levels. And, like, depending on how many badges you have, it'll, like, automatically implant certain levels that, like, it roughly predicts you should be at at that point in the game. That's my guess. Yeah, so it just constantly, like, adapts to where the player is in the game. Yeah, and, like, approximating, like, what sort of challenge it thinks you should have at that point. Yeah, sort of like Resident Evil games, how they... They'll give you the exact amount of supplies you need, like in Resident Evil 2 Remake, like mm -hmm. to get through the game. They'll be like, okay, you have three bullets. Here's one. Have fun. Good yeah. luck. You have four yeah. bullets now. <laughs> so, yeah, I assume it'll, it'll work somehow like that. But the idea of just having a full open world and like being able to actually go wherever you want, because that's rare in games. It, like, even in Breath of the Wild, you are gated in some ways in that game unless you have like specific items or or uh, specific weapons like to where you're strong enough like to actually use them and survive like it's i wonder if, if this will do like like similar things to that but in different ways like you can go to the snowy mountain area but you're gonna die if you don't have some type of coat or something like that <laughs> <laughs> something like i think that, it's cool yeah. though it gives like not not every person that experiences the game new or old is guaranteed to have the exact same experience. Yeah. And it's going to be like something... the water cooler game for sure. Like, yeah. And I think like, Oh, I did this and this happened. And like, I don't know. I think that's, I like that though. You know, not everybody's like, Oh, what did you, well, I got good and I did it this way. And it's like, no, everybody had a different experience and it was really tailored to their wants as a player. Now, the one, now one thing that's interesting is that this game is going to be four-player co-op, and I'm assuming it means the actual whole game, right? Like, it's not like a specific mode where you're, like, doing rush mode or something together. Like, it's the whole experience in co-op, which sounds pretty crazy and also mm -hmm. sounds pretty fun. I wish I had friends who had the exact same schedule as me because I would want to play it like this. But yeah. it's not likely for me, but, like, the idea of everyone experiencing this open world together and, like, traveling out in this open world, like, that sounds really cool. Like, that's the dream right there. That's what people have been wanting, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, it's, like, it's funny. Like, we're treating this like it's, like, this grand revelation, and then you remember <laughs> that there's, like, this Temtem MMO that, like, yeah. there's already thousands of people playing together. <laughs> but but now Pokemon's doing it, so it's like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's, it's just the IP that's, like, all the 
That's like that's that's most of what makes it exciting is the fact that it's Pokemon. Let's be honest. We're, we're yeah. like we all have nostalgia and yeah, totally. all that stuff. And I mean, like I'm willing to own that because, like for instance, like I'm I I truly don't think of myself as like the biggest Marvel guy, at least compared to the people that like talk about the movies every day. But that Marvel's Midnight Suns game. The, with the from the XCOM people and it's like card based combat. Everybody hates card based combat, including me. But I'm excited for this game because like XCOM Marvel actually sounds cool to me. Yeah. If there was no Spider Man and Venom, like I probably wouldn't be looking at this game. <laughs> yeah, there. the fact that it's it's so like they're putting a hefty budget into a card game that's Marvel. Like that right there and it is like kinda crazy. Yeah. Um and and they're also doing like not relationship stuff, but like character development stuff with that game, mm. which was surprising to me because that studio hadn't really done that in the past with XCOM. Um, yeah, yeah. So it is interesting that they'd start with like a Marvel game to do that. Yeah, <laughs> but but uh, it looks good. You won't, you won't get to sleep with Peter Parker though, regrettably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, college Peter Parker, by the way. But uh, <laughs> now we um. I will say one thing they sort of hid in the delay announcement was the fact that the Switch version was delayed even later than the PS5 and Xbox Series and PC versions. Yeah, um, and the PS4 sort of, and Xbox One are delayed more too. Yeah, like that's kind of weird. Um, I guess it makes sense. I'm sure they 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 take more like optimization and stuff to get it running correctly, but yeah. that's kind of a bummer. Like I feel like. There have there have been so many games that have been announced for Switch, and it's like day one with the other platforms, and it's like, oh sweet, finally, like a game's coming out day one, and then r- like uh, right ahead of launch, it's like, but the Switch version the delayed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a it, tradition. It's <laughs> definitely gonna happen with Hogwarts. It's it's definitely yeah, gonna happen with sure. some other ones uh, that I can't yeah, think of right now. 100%. But. But I do think it's notable this time that even, like, PS4 and Xbox One are pushed back. Like, mm-hmm. hopefully that means, like, they're really putting some graphical juice into this thing and we'll see, like, a real palpable difference on the other platforms. Like, yeah. if not, then, I mean, what are they doing? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so Now, well. back to new features in these Pokemon games. They announced a Terra... Terra Stalize... Terrestalize. Terrestalize, maybe? Terrestalize. Yeah, terrestalize something. Bless you. This, <laughs> this is a... It's like a crystallized form, and you can it actually potentially can change the elemental type of the Pokemon and the height of them, which I'm assuming changes their power and attack and defense and whatnot if they're taller. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I will say... It seems like with all these things, giganticizing, and then after they actually, they actually they put in a lot of effort with that. But ever since then, they did the Dynamaxing thing, and now this crystallized thing. I'm just going to say it. Game Freak is doing the absolute least work they can possibly think <laughs> with, with, also creating, with also creating a new, like, hit thing for a Pokemon game. Like a, uh, what's it called? The, I'm, the word is escaping me. John, you know the word I'm looking for. A, uh, a gimmick, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't know I couldn't think of that word. Okay. So, I was worried you were going to like it, and I was like, please don't. With the Dynamaxing thing. Get out of with, soapbox. Like, Let me tell you it. why this is the greatest like, thing. put that shit Eric, away. <laughs> Eric, ding the bell. Ding the bell, Eric. He's not ready. Anyway, with the Dynamaxing thing, it's like they only, they only made the character model bigger. <laughs> like they didn't. Ju- there were a few Pokemon that looked different. Pikachu, they made him fat. Pikachu, that was cool. But aside from that, it's literally what. Okay, let's create a new Pokemon thing. Well, I don't know. That's a lot of work. How we how are we gonna do this in this really short time span? Well, if we just make them bigger, then we don't have to do any work, and we just call it a thing and add some sparkles and call it a day. And that's what they did with uh, with that. Now with this. They're obviously doing another very simple, let's put this crystallizing thing around the Pokemon that, where they can probably do like super easily. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm not a developer. I don't want to say it's super easily, but it doesn't look like it takes much work to put Easy a, as hell. Brett a filter, <laughs> a filter yeah. over a Pokemon. <laughs> and once again, Brett barely Medlock, change. AAA developer, easy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, barely change the actual look of the Pokemon. It just seems like really low effort. We have to have something new, but it has to be very easy and not much work to do. So with the Dynamaxing, or, uh, uh, 
giganticizing. I think that's what that's what it's called, right? Something like that. With that in uh, Pokemon X and Y, the Charizard and all the Pokemon, they changed the way they look. They looked awesome. Like that was exciting. The Dynamaxing thing in Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield, that was stupid. They're just bigger. They're bigger and some of them look different. Now this, they ha- they have uh, sparkles around them, They're, and they look mostly the same. And I believe there's 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 like a Pikachu where it's changed a little bit. It has like three balloons above its head. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. It just looks. <laughs> it looks it like a Mario Kart <laughs> battle <laughs> mode. Really Mario went Kart to the battle drawing mode. board on that one. <laughs> Well, um, it kind of rolled my eyes during the trailer because, like, up until that, they were talking about, like, find your treasure, go explore, be a treasure hunter. And then all of a sudden it was that. And I was like, the Pokemon are the treasure. <laughs> yeah, I was just, just like, calling that. I was like, eye roll. I was like, this is, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. I don't so know. That... Like, as, as a mechanic, it sounds like it might be kind of cool because I guess some of the Pokemon actually change types when they transform like that. And, like, I don't I don't know if that's been a gimmick they've used before, but again, I, I stopped playing these games after like the original Ruby and Sapphire. So to me, that's like an interesting, fresh mechanic that you the might be able is, to change in mid-battle. I feel like with Pokemon, I, I never have to utilize anything they introduce in any of the games because I'm always OP and I just go in and wreck yeah. house. Like, and that's, that's not even with like a bunch of grinding. That's just playing the game normally. Like, yeah. So... They keep like adding all these elements where you're never you're never really forced to use them. Um, I'd I'd be interested to to play a Pokemon game that has no levels and you just like there's there's like a balancing system with all the different Pokemon and you have to counter like certain Pokemon with different types and and like actually think more strategically than just being a way higher level and just destroying them easily. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm that's sure a really everyone cool hate idea, that. actually. Yeah. I'd I'd be maybe more inclined to try that a, a levelless Pokemon. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, right like Dine Doc. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, Mail it to Game Freak. Now, is there anything else aside uh, inv- involving the crystallized looking Pokemon? Because there's there's two other topics on Pokemon that I want to go over. So, does anyone else have any thoughts that on any on anything we've talked about so far? No. All right. Next up. These legendaries that you ride on. It looks like with Pokemon Arceus, you, you, you utilized a bunch of different Pokemon, like four or five different Pokemon for climbing, for flying, which I thought was really cool. And you didn't have to actually have them in your party or anything. With this, it looks like one Pokemon does everything. So it's, it's like kind of like, once again, like how can we do something new but do less work than we did before? And they were like, we'll create one Pokemon that does everything. And... And this time you can ride on them. Uh, Inspector Gadget Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. the robot. <laughs> um, now, <laughs> one thing that really bothers me with these things is one of them has wheels and doesn't use them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is going on with this Pokemon? Whose idea well, was this? They're like... I- too good for wheels. <laughs> I, I think he uses the wheels when he goes up the side of the mountain. Like, I think that's when he uses the wheels. He like adheres and drives up the mountainside using the wheels. I don't know. I didn't oh, see the Maybe they one. aren't wheels. Maybe they're boobs or testicles I, or something. They else. should show there. A double chin. Right. For like double that chin. split second, I think they showed it using the wheels on the side there. That. No, yeah. his little legs were still climbing. <laughs> maybe, well, yeah, he's maybe, climbing. Maybe it's both though. <clears throat> he's climbing. All these, de- all these design choices probably saved Game Freak like millions of dollars in budget. Yeah. Like, ah, yeah, just make them do everything. Ah, put crystals all around them. Put balloons I... above them. <laughs> let's just let's just make the model bigger, and then yeah, that's exciting. Um, yeah. The <laughs> very whoa, Jesus, my dogs. Go ahead. John. I bet. Mute. I bet that uh, they're really angry in retrospect that they invented the concept of shinies back in gold and silver to like be these ultra rare alternates. Because they could have all along just been like, oh, here's the new Pokemon. This is the new Charizard. He's blue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they make them literally shiny now. The yeah. Mega Evolutions was really cool. And did you guys ever watch that that uh, limited series Pokemon Origin or Origins mm-hmm. or whatever? I saw some of it at least. Yeah, it was cool. It's it's actually really good. It's like my favorite like Pokemon anime thing that they did. Yeah. And unexpectedly, it ends up it, it ended up tying into like X and Y and stuff because of like the Mega Evolution stuff, which I thought was yeah, awesome. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and that was. Uh... I think it was the first episode of that anime, yeah, because the red fights Brock, 
And yeah. I think he asks, like, how many... Have, this is, like, your first gym. He's like, okay. And so he only takes, like, two Pokemon out of, like, this larger set that you see he has. So, like, mm. it's kind of been canon for a while now that, like, they gauge their Pokemon to your skill level. Eric, we're totally going to get a, get a freaking copyright for that. Trust me. Trust me. We are definitely going to get a copyright strike for that. I've had it happen like 18 <laughs> times with, with uh, Pokemon anime. Oh, uh, no. You might as well just show it again. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. yeah. Uh, Still shots should be okay, Eric says. Yeah, that's perfect. But yeah, I didn't... Um, I'm not very excited about the uh, Terra Stylize, whatever it's called. Um, I'm just going to call it crystallizing. <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah, back to uh, the legendaries you'd ride on. I guess it's cool. Like I'm playing Xenoblade, which we'll probably get to, John, for sure. I'm playing that, and I don't know if there's ever going to be any type of way to move faster, but I really wish that my guy could just run a little bit faster in this massive open world. Mm. And these these Pokemon are going to offer that, being able to ride on them like a motorcycle. So that's kind of cool. But I'm definitely wheels. definitely not getting the one that doesn't use wheels. <laughs> like that's no, I'm, yeah. I, I would be pissed if I was sitting there on a Pokemon that had wheels and then it ran the whole time. <laughs> But yeah, if you want to see my live reaction to that, you can go check it out on our TikTok. I recorded it and posted it. It'd be amazing if six months later they said, the wheels will now work as long as you buy this 1099 <laughs> DLC. To oh make my his god. Wheels spin. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, it's like actually, potential one, unlocked DLC. One thing that'd be cool, not necessarily DLC, but like maybe if you could unlock in the game, is to somehow customize these things because. It showed four players, and, and two of them had, like, one each. Um, so, and they all looked the exact same. And I was, it'd be cooler if, like, the, uh, these, um, these, these, these legendaries, you could change something about them, like the color of them or something, because it just looks a little bland seeing two right next to each other that look the exact same. But uh, on to the next pokey topic. These graphics, just wanted to shout them out one more time. Horrible. Horrible <laughs> graphics. They are ugly. I cannot believe how bad this game looks. It looks worse than Arceus. Um, that said, still, still into the ideas. I'm still ex- probably going to buy it, let's be honest. Um, but man, these graphics are bad. Like, po- Pokemon Let's Go. Pokemon Let's Go from 2017 or whenever it was. I was like, okay, this looks pretty good for the first Pokemon game on Switch. And little did I know, that would be still the best-looking Pokemon game on Switch five years later. Um, now, other topics on the list. I actually don't have the other ones open, so uh, Greg, what are you up to? I was going to say, wait, you're skipping the most important part of the Pokemon thing. Bring it up. Fido! <laughs> oh my god. Fido? Another, another cute... Did you not see the cute, like, dog oh, Pokemon? its name is Fido? Yeah, but like dough, like bread, and he's got like buns for oh, ears. Okay. So he's, he's like a he dough. He looks delicious. <laughs> I, I love see. him. <laughs> okay, now we can move on. <laughs> that, that That's was all it. you want to do, shout out that Pokemon. <laughs> I'm, okay, yeah, I'm making a list. I have Lechonk, I have Smoliv, I have Fido. I'm probably going to have to go with Coco now, so I have a Fire Pokemon. So I'm making my I just team. like the name. Yeah. <laughs> it's the names for me. Mm. So, that was it. Um, but yeah, final thoughts on Pokemon. I'll probably get it. It looks pretty good, but it also looks pretty ugly in terms of the graphics. But uh, <laughs> maybe in portable mode, like not playing on my TV, maybe it's like, oh, this is like a pretty good handheld game in, in those standards, like in, in that way. But, uh, yeah, but I still, I, I asked this question last time, you know, when I think before Arceus came out, I said, you know, why does it get such a big pass? You know, why did why aren't people more critical of it? Because everyone's just gonna say is... that, that graphics don't matter when it when it's involving Pokemon. Yeah, and, it's and, and, why? And, why? and eight year olds don't care. <laughs> yeah, they're just gonna say it's for kids well, or the graphics true. don't matter. Yeah. Like Well yeah, a lot of things for kids. kids there. Mario's for kids. That doesn't mean adults aren't gonna play it. Like but it's even, okay, okay to, so, make, to be mad. So, so even like, okay, so I, I got to see my nieces and nephews this past weekend, and, and we live in different states. But even them, they're like 10 and 12 years old. I mean, they know the difference in graphics. They yeah. know what stuff looks like. He, he even has the, my nephew has the counter on for. Looks like. Yeah. 
<laughs> they they uh, have the counters on for like 60 FPS in like Fortnite, for example, and they know that you know they can, you know, move faster or have better movement or you know it just looks and plays better overall. So sometimes they'll choose to play on PS5 over PS4, but it's like they know and like they're aware of it. So even if kids, I mean, they gotta have some idea that it looks ugly or not, and especially if they have another console yeah, in the house, they know. And like other first-party games look better in general. Like they look much better. There are a few that have come out as of lately that weren't that great. Like I think like Mario Golf was kind of ugly. Um, but like generally, Nintendo First Party looks really good, and that's what a lot of kids are playing. Like Smash sold like 28 million units or something like that. That's in, that's insane. And Smash is a gorgeous game. Going from Smash to this game is like really jarring. Like it's gonna it's ugly, but it's for kids. Can't can't criticize it. Can't be mad about it. Um, hmm. But man, like uh, Eric is showing a what's it called a Pokemon Snap like. That is the the type of graphics I would have expected in a Pokemon game, like a real Pokemon game, by now. Not... Li- like, a lot of people really think someone like is, like, uh, being dramatic, but when I say that this game looks like an early, early PS3 game that's from, like, a really small developer or, like, a really late PS2 game, it seriously <laughs> does. Like, it looks <laughs> ugly. <laughs> Siri thinks I said her name. So how do you really feel about these graphics, though? <laughs> Greg, I'm surprised you don't criticize it a little more, because you, you are a PC guy. Yeah, but, like, I mean, if I probably cared more about Pokemon, then I'd, I'd probably be a little bit more critical, but... I mean, how how can I criticize it, Brett? It's for kids. <laughs> <laughs> the thing but, like, is, is, I mean, that... I could see... But see, like I can see the difference in something like Fall Guys. Like obviously, looking at it on, you know, Fall different Guys consoles, and then playing, yeah. But then playing it on PC is like, you know, the the you're getting the best graphic, the best graphics possible for that game overall on the PC. But it doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the place where I'm going to play it. I'm, I'm not going to play it for the graphics. I'm going to play it for, you know, if if somebody else is is playing co-op or. Uh, multiplayer with me. Are you talking about Fall Guys or Pokemon? <laughs> Fall Guys, not Pokemon. Okay, but yeah, um, yeah. I just wish they would just like let it bake. Like, imagine if they if the game is done in November, it's done, it comes out. Imagine if they dedicated that like a whole another year, instead released it the next November, and and just dedicated it only to the graphics because the core game is finished, but just. Look at, I mean, it's just freaking ugly. Like, it's an ugly game. Anyway, we can, we can just move on. <laughs> I will add real quick, though, that, like, even though I'm very likely not going to buy this the same I haven't bought any Pokemon games in, like, many, many years, I will say that I think the games are trending closer towards something that I would buy again. It's getting closer to something that would actually have my interest. Like, the, the, the idea of, like, the open world tackling gyms in any order, I think is pretty cool. Yeah, so, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I I really loved the change up that that uh, Pokemon Arceus was like. Mm-hmm. That's I'm more excited because I'm assuming they're going to make another one that's just like a standalone like like game like that one was uh, after this. I'm hoping because a lot of people love that game, um, and I I I'm 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 looking more forward to that style of of Pokemon game than I am these ones, but uh, because I mean. Uh, Brett froze no. on a Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. He froze on oh. a rat. <laughs> I yep. panicked because I thought it was I mean... my connection. I was like, oh, no. No. Nope. Well, I'll finish his thought for him. What he was going to say is, what I mean is, I'm a big baby. I understand that graphics and frames matter. I can't believe I chose a Nintendo Switch over any other console. And I <laughs> probably will never like have... Oh, here oh. <laughs> get... oh no. Oh. We got like one second of him, but he'll be back. That's all right. Yeah, he was still ranting. <laughs> he was still going. Yep, ranting. Yeah, raving. he was going full speed the whole time. Hey, there, there you are. go. Am I back? Can you yep. hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sweet. Reset your rant. I don't remember what it was talk like. What like <laughs> where said, I was at? <laughs> you said I mean, and then you had your hand like this, and then you froze. 
I mean, we can move on. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh... Yeah, Pokemon Legends, I liked how they, like, implemented a bunch of new things, like dodging and, like, the Pokemon were trying to kill you in the world and all the, all that kind of stuff. And I, I really want more of that. And I'm, I haven't seen in this new one, like, does it go into, like, a battle mode or can you freely roam around during the battle like you could in Legends? Because I, I really liked that. I, like, imagine I, that with four people, like... Yeah, that you, would be awesome. You come yeah. up on, like... A Pokemon that's like a like a big Pokemon or something, and you all throw your Pokemon at it, but you can like freely roam around yeah. while they're fat, like fighting. Like that'd be really cool. Mm-hmm. I want to say that I think they mentioned something for like the the terror raid battles, which is like it's like all you and your friends versus like I don't know the special super Pokemon or whatever. Like I thought I heard it say that like you all act simultaneously or something like that. Like it's not as super rigid as a normal fight, but I'm not. I'm not positive what all that entails. Hmm. So I don't you know. know. Yeah. But we'll find out. Yeah. Uh, well, I just have to look more into it and whatnot. But uh, we need to move on to the next topic, which is Splatoon Three. Now, I know none of us are very big Splatoon yeah. players, but there is a direct tomorrow, and I have probably played a total of five minutes of Splatoon during one of like <laughs> the betas or whatever, and I picked it up. And I, it was like trying to teach me stuff, and then I never made it through that. <laughs> that I, I, I've never actually played a, like a round. But I don't know. This game, they've talked about how they want like more of like a single player component, and that is exciting to me. If they can make something mm-hmm. that's like a worthwhile single player campaign that like utilizes the stuff that they created for the multiplayer, um, then that's that's cool with me. Like, there's this little side scrolling section show, uh, shown on the screen right now. I'm wondering, is that like a playable section or is that just like a cutscene? I, I honestly couldn't even tell but I don't know, they I'm, said it's what 30 minutes long yeah yeah the direct. yeah that the seems direct. like a long time to dedicate just to splatoon just well, to the multiplayer so well yeah. like to date like and i've seen this pointed out elsewhere like so far the marketing it's just kind of felt like it's like splatoon 2 but there's more stuff so like tomorrow's like the day to like really differentiate how this is like yeah. its own game worth playing and it's not just like Splatoon 2 Plus. It's yeah. Splatoon 3 full of like unique whatever is that you've never experienced before. And so like this is like gonna be like the most important thirty minutes this game ever has. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like that this is like going back to some of Nintendo's old mistakes or that they're resting on their laurels with anything like pokemon you know that just seems like rehashings or you know not much new is coming and the same thing goes for splatoon like i feel like this is the 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 marketing mistakes that we saw in the wii u generation right um like i don't know like i mean again historical precedent being what it is we can probably assume that splatoon 3 will sell pretty well um yeah like it's not one of like it's not in like the top ten at Nintendo's website or whatever, so it hasn't sold like twenty million units or whatever, but it's it's probably doing well enough for what it is. Um but I don't know. I think I think for Splatoon specifically, it's going to just depend on like how damn good the presentation is tomorrow to see like we're to basically find out if this really is its own like unique thing or if it feels kind of not necessarily phoned in, but just sort of like unremarkable like from a creativity standpoint yeah and i was gonna say like i know a lot of people who are very very excited about like splatoon they like to play the games they're really hyped for splatoon 3 but i feel like it's one of those games that once it launches it dies off very quickly like there's Mm, all this hype leading up to the launch like from mainly the fan base because yeah the marketing on it hasn't been as heavy as like for other games um, but then once it launches, it's just going to go quiet, probably until the holiday season, where they'll give it another little push, and then the fan base is just, we have it, we're happy, and no one really talks about it much after that, it feels like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of that leftover, like, <clears throat> excited fan base was from that Wii U generation of Splatoon fans. Like, even, I think, uh, what Eli from Nintendo Enthusiast was was a big time player. And he, I mean, he was, a. I played with him randomly, I think a couple times. And then like, 
um, he was excited about new Splatoon news for two, but like, I don't know. I never, I, it's never, it's like at least Nintendo is for, for better or worse, trying to capture something or present something that's going to capture the shooter market. But I feel like even more now, I feel like more now than ever, there's more competition in the space that they had a good opportunity to grab and occupy and, and grasp. But now it's like, they've got to compete with so many others out there that they have larger player bases. And yeah, Nintendo has a huge install base now, but like mm-hmm. you're on the third game in the franchise. Like how, how do you capture someone like me who's never touched Splatoon other yeah. than a few times? Like, and I'm going to watch tomorrow, you know, because I want to see if it does that for me, if it gets me excited, if it like, it should be, it shouldn't be, you know, like, like, just like Pokemon is kind of a game for everybody with a, a low entry point. It like, this should be something for me to say like, Oh, that looks kind of fun as a shooter. Maybe I should play it or give it a try. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this game, like not only are they hyping up this single player mode, but there's also like a separate co-op campaign that is its own thing as well. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like they're trying to hit like, yeah, they're trying to hit like each different kind of player. So just got to see yeah. if it's any good. So maybe that's yeah. why tomorrow's like showcase is so long. Like it's 30 minutes, so they're probably going to do multiplayer, they're going to do single player, and they're also going to do the co-op mode, which is like different, like you're saying. So yeah, yeah there's a lot to go over. Yeah, that meaty. What's yeah, up? that'd be perfect. I said no, 10 t- minutes dedicated a piece. Oh, it yeah. Pretty yeah. meaty. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. See. I have uh, been wanting to have a reason to be fully introduced to this world. The multiplayer stuff just doesn't speak to me, but any single player stuff interests me for sure, especially with a game that has such an awesome looking style and just like like personality to it. Yeah. What what could it say to you to speak to you? Like what what would grab your attention and say, "Okay, I'm going to well, play this." The single player component of Splatoon 2 looked really cool. Like it was basically like platforming sections and puzzles and all that, but it was released as a DLC and not as like a standalone thing. I never wanted to buy the base game, so then I could then buy the DLC. It didn't seem worth mm-hmm. it for like a four-hour campaign, you know. Like, um, it was actually, I don't know, it's probably shorter than that. But that always interested me. And then now hearing that they're actually, I've never heard them actually talk about the single-player stuff until <laughs> this. They, it's usually like an afterthought, like. I had made a video saying one time, like, Splatoon 1 didn't have, like, a single-player component. And everyone, like, corrected me, yes, it does! It has a single... And I'm like, I mean, Nintendo never talked about it. I assumed it was just, like, trials of some sort, of some stupid mode. That Like, I didn't know there was an actual story or anything to Splatoon 1. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. This looks looks like it could be uh, interesting, because, like, the... The very first time they showed it off, it wasn't just like straight up multiplayer, like chaos. They like did like this really slow, moody introduction where like they're out in, in the desert. desert. Yeah. Yeah. They're like walking into the city. I'm like, okay, this se- like this world is cool. Like I want, I, w- I want something out of it, but it's definitely not going to be multiplayer. But single player could could get me. Yeah. Now that's fair. Now there's other news topics, but you guys just want to talk about what we're playing instead. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Looks. Let's see. Um. Let's see if any of this is interesting. Sonic the Movie 3, <laughs> December 2024. That's pretty interesting. Um, Greg, I yes. bet you're excited, right? I am, but didn't they already confirm that Jim Carrey was not going to be returning for the series? Well, he said that he was retiring, but they never... I don't think they ever officially confirmed he wasn't coming back. Yeah. Uh, so, but, but yeah, but without I mean, Jim Carrey, also, that sucks. It's also an opportunity for them to you know expand and bring in another star i mean they probably have the budget now considering how well it's done and if they do something like i don't know if you guys have seen uh ghostbusters afterlife but i was pleasantly surprised the direction that that movie went in and i feel like if they did something along direction (laughs) kind of (laughs) i I, well I, i give it a little bit more credit than than just like plucking one actor and placing him in another movie and you oh, know, I meant calling like it a day. tonally speaking but yeah oh tonal mm, i don't know it's it's it surprised me how much how much comedy it had and how much like tongue-in-cheek comedy but also like 
kind of gory in in some ways, mm. in a lot of ways actually. Now that I think about it, but then it still like had its callbacks to the originals, and I don't know. I was just like oddly surprised the the tone it had. But like I said, you know, if Sonic manages to, I wish it was there was a little bit more distance between the two releases between two and three. You know, let it marinate for a while. I mean, there's still people like I just saw a video. Uh, from the, I think from the Sega uh, Instagram page that was like showing off like dumb ways to use the Sonic 2 movie case, and they were like chopping bananas with it and like spreading sprinkles and like baking <laughs> with it. But like that, that just came out. Like let that, you know, let people watch, you know, that as a, a summer movie and for the holiday season, and and let you know. I, I I just hope they spend more time on it than it seems like you know, Game Freak is spending on Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> That's not hard to <laughs> do. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess we kind of already know who the villain of three is regardless. I mean, I, I still haven't yeah. seen Should two, but I know, I know what happens at the end, no. Yeah. I don't think it's that... Is it? Is it like a, a horrible spoiler to talk about now? I would say yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, then never mind. Okay. Um, yeah. But I am curious who they'll cast in the remaining Sonic characters that have yet to show up mm-hmm. in the in the movies. Me too. Yeah, because um, they just kind of dropped the release date. They didn't say anything else about like new cast members. I mean, they still have like a ways to go to do, do that. Know who, but... Do you know who I would love for um, Shadow the Hedgehog? If oh, if they ever bring yeah. him in, I would love Adam Driver. I think he'd be really good as Shadow. I could see yeah. that. Yeah, I can see he has, that. He has like that dark, <laughs> evil voice, um, and he kind of reminds me of Shadow as uh, what's his name. I have such a soft spot imagine, for him as an actor. I to imagine <laughs> I the why. voice. I'm just uh, imagining like that Adam Driver using I'm, his I'm... regular voice as Shadow. <laughs> Well, no, actually, the, uh, what I'm actually imagining is SNL skit. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I'm imagining that version. Actually, the like the Kylo Ren from SNL on Undercover Boss. Well, I hear Shadow has that... an eight pack that he shredded. <laughs> the Oil Baron one is absolute gold. If you no, haven't seen that one, please I, watch I've it. I've seen it. I, I yeah, I I've seen like a small clip of that one. I don't think I've seen the whole thing, but yeah. It is commendable how Adam Driver utterly commits himself to whatever thing he's doing, whether it's a good yeah. role or a terrible piece of nonsense. He always gives <laughs> it like a hundred percent. That's why I like. Yeah, him. I think yeah. I think he could pull off Shadow for real. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I still d- did not like that they gave Knuckles that accent. I did not. I didn't want him to just suddenly have like a really strong accent. Like what was what? it, Australian or something? They gave him think, an Australian just, accent. I, yeah, just, like I, just Elba's, I just assumed like, it would be regular voice. regular voice. Yeah. Was it, it not? Just, well, I didn't see this. No, no I, it, I don't it, think it was. It, it is I, Idris I Elba's British, right? voice. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm saying. I wish he had an, an American accent like how he does in the games. I don't know. I don't know if. Oh, so you want him to just whitewash everything? Doing. Okay, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? That was nothing to do with color. <laughs> I don't like he. It's just jarring seeing Knuckles out of nowhere have this really strong accent. Like I, I always pictured him as just a normal American accent. It can be any race, Greg. Just not British or Australian, whatever it was. <laughs> Except the race that Idris Elba is. <laughs> what? <sighs> All right, um, moving on. Greg's always <laughs> trying to bring race into everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I do agree with you because it was like. It was like um, I, I his personality is supposed to be. He he's a rapper in the game. Like he raps a song. <laughs> like he he has like a specific personality like to him. It, it sounds and he no. He I think it's just the, the what. I think it's just the way he he sounded like he was like like biting his cheek or his lip the whole time and like like grunting it out and like everything. I, I like <laughs> that. <kind of. laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if it was like, I don't know, I guess different. You could just it, done his natural voice, and I think it would have played out fine. His natural American accent. 
voice. No, that is he, <laughs> isn't he? He's British, isn't he? He could have just yeah, done he's that. British. But I, but he, he's in like a bunch of, he's in the office. He, he, sh- he should have done his office voice for Knuckles. There we go. Um, Fair enough. Next up on the list, we had. I don't have it in front of me, guys. What, what was next on the list? I'm a terrible <laughs> host. Oh Live yeah, action. has has <laughs> Pac-Man. has anyone played the uh, Mario Kart levels yet? No. No. I'm terrible. I was, oh, like, they're... I was playing other games. <laughs> <laughs> I played through them one time, and uh, they're 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 fine. They're good. It's it's fun playing like the new levels that I've never played because they're basically new. Because who who plays Mario Kart Tour? You know. Um, yeah. But but we can hop on into what we're playing before we head out of here because I'm ready to talk about it, John. I'm ready to talk about Xenoblade Chronicles Three. I missed last week. I had so much to say in response to you, mainly about how you said the soundtrack wasn't that good, and I just can't believe it. I can't believe you said that, because the soundtrack is amazing. Can you guys hear me? Yes. I can't yeah. hear John. I can't hear John. Uh-oh. John's gone. Um, oh, no. If he... Uh, try, try leaving and coming back. Right? Did you mute him on purpose so he couldn't talk about Xenoblade? <laughs> no, but I should have. You dirtbag. You, sh- you probably <laughs> did. He'll. Whoops, John. Your mm-hmm. your audio's not working. Guess you gotta leave. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Oh, oh, there you go. go. There you go. There go. Yeah. What happened? Anywho, I don't A short nothing. in the wire. Uh, just, just, yeah, just the wire just decided to suck. So. <laughs> Anywho. But yeah, the sound. All right, let's I do mean, this. Uh, the soundtrack, John. You 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 said it wasn't that great. I I honestly like it more than the other two. I think, and I'm not even still not even that far into the game. I just think it's so good. I like. There. Have you unlocked chain attacks? Yeah. Okay. The song that plays during chain attacks is like the only song I can like remember <laughs> in oh, my man. head. Like. There, there's definitely like a lot of good songs in the game, but like I, I, I stick to what I said last week. Like I don't, I don't feel like there's as many like straight up bangers this time. Like, like you not know, like super energy, energetic stuff that gets stuck in my head. Like I didn't feel that. Thinking back at Xenoblade Chronicles two specifically, a lot of the the music during the cutscenes was like super hyped, like. Mm. Rock, like metally type music. Well, like um, even just walking around, it's like da 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 da, like like really <laughs> big stuff. Like, and then and this game, there's not as much of that. It's more like symphony style music, like yeah. strings, not not necessarily a lot of drums all the time, or yeah. or uh, guitars. But during the cutscenes though of this game, like I am just constantly impressed by the score. It, it's it's it sounds like. A movie like quality, like a like a Spider Man movie quality type type score, um, That's fair. or like something that that uses like a symphony of some sort. But uh, yeah, like I just think it goes really well, and like I'm just constantly impressed. But this is the first time that I've played a Xenoblade game like with headphones in pretty much the whole time. Um, All right, because, well, that's fair. Like I've talked about Switch, they they like added the Bluetooth feature with with mm-hmm. AirPods, so it's literally just a click away, and you I immediately can switch my phone audio into my Switch. So it's it's awesome, but yeah. Now let's talk about the actual game a little bit. I won't talk about it like a lot because it's been like three weeks in a row now. This will be the third week where we've talked about it. Um, but I am in chapter three still. I haven't I still haven't gotten to play much the past like week, like week, which is sad. But I'm definitely gonna get to playing it a lot more. I've just had a bunch of stuff going on with work and stuff. But yeah, it's really good. I like the story. I like the setup. I, d- I do think that s- some of the story set up involving them deciding, you know what, let's try and not die, let's try and live. <laughs> I thought that that could have been handled a little better because this isn't this isn't really like story spoilers because they brought it all up in the trailers. Like these people are meant to die within ten years. They're sp- they're supposed to have a ten year lifespan. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the trailers even like they're like. We need to live like we ha- like we gotta go do this thing. I won't say what the thing is, but um, and I just thought that could have been handled a little more impactful. Like they just sort of started doing it, and they didn't really discuss like they didn't discuss it, you know. At least from what I saw, um, maybe I missed like a a conversation of some sort, but well, like the whole game, it kind of like 
it kind of doles out its story like very like bit by bit by bit. The the longer you play, you will see that like most of the characters have like more motivation. And I okay. tweeted out the other day that like this the core cast like it it might be the most developed cast I've seen in a game since like Persona Four maybe. Damn. Like yeah, and like that's not oh, yeah because they say... they do like the flashbacks with them. Which right. Is really cool. Yeah, they do a lot of that. And on top of that, you know, like there's so many just random like camp scenes like. There's so mm -hmm. many cinematics in this game that exist only to like push forward little character beats, which is actually yeah. kind of nice. It's also kind of bloated, but kind of nice. <laughs> there's a lot it's of like, cutscenes. <laughs> there's a, a lot of, lot of cutscenes. <laughs> yeah, but like it's it's nice because like you play a game like this and it makes you realize that like the vast majority of stories in most games are still just bad. And like mm -hmm. this is a game that like genuinely tries to have like a good story for like any medium's sake, not just by like crappy video game standards. And I think overall it succeeds pretty well. Uh like for, for people listening, actually I I finished the game. I kinda like lived and breathed it just to get it done. <laughs> so I really committed to it. So I got it done in like around like seventy nine hours. And I I skipped like, I, I played a lot of side content, but I would just skip all the dialogue. Like, I would mash dialogue, or I would just outright just hold down the, the X XP button and, and skip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in fact, even in some of, like, the main story scenes, where, like, if I can tell where it's going, and then, like, they're just sort of doing, like, okay, we're gonna do this next. And it's, like, an extra, like, 40 seconds of just waiting for the scene <laughs> to end. Like, I'd, when I get the gist, I just hold the X button and skip. So, by doing yeah. that, I was able to get it done in 79 hours. And Jeez. I only Jeez. missed... I missed one hero of the... There's, like, lots of different seventh character slots, and you can pick one to use. I only I only missed one. So, I did, now, I did see most of the stuff. Now, I gotta be honest. Regarding the combat, for, like, almost the whole time I've been playing, I've been like, okay, I, I can grasp this. This is different. I understand it better than, than the other two. But then... Yeah. Some of the stuff that they started introducing, like, lately, I'm, I am starting to get confused again. Like, just like the other games. And I'm like, what does uh, like, this mean? Like, like what am I doing? Stuff? Yeah, like, canceling and chain attack. Like, I understand the concept of the chain they attacks, but They explain the cancel so badly. <laughs> you just kind of figure cancel? it out while you play. Uh, I, I'll just try and figure it out. But, um, <laughs> yeah, the combat's still... I mean, it's it's better than the other two. But that's so not so much, much better, for me. I think. No, it's really not. I mean, I did not really like the combat of the of the other two games. Yeah, um, I, I really didn't like it in two. Yeah, two was worse than one for sure. Uh. This is better <laughs> than than both of them, though, in my opinion, yes. and yours, obviously. But yeah. uh, and what's funny is it kind of meshes the two systems together in some ways. One and two. Yeah, it does. Because the like... characters from like the one world, their attacks charge up over time, and the characters from the other, it builds up when you attack. They just lifted that from those games, I think. I'm. Just kind of sad that there's no blades in this game, or maybe there are, and I don't, I haven't seen them yet. Um, I liked all the variety of the blades; they they, they all looked so cool. But I guess it's better having real characters in your crew and like actually like fleshing them out than just like getting random blades because they look cool. But yeah, especially from like quasi gotcha style mechanics, like yeah, yeah. No, I I I definitely preferred it this way. Where like. First of all, most of the side quests are gone. I mean, most of the fetch quests are gone, which is awesome, because that was such a giant waste of time and waste of life in the first two games, and in X. Uh, <laughs> but like now, a lot of the side quests feel more focused on specifically the colonies, and usually if you're doing colony side quests, a new hero is like sort of like part of the package with it. So it really feels like you're getting a lot more now when you actually bother with the side content in this game. And like even each hero has like their own... like story and backstory and half the time i skipped it but you know if you care <laughs> it's there so it's nice yeah. like i i really feel like they elevated the whole experience in, in that regard yeah i will say like us uh, like uh, some of the things the game does early on makes you really just interested in the world and the characters because like right off the bat this isn't really a spoiler i guess it's a, it's a minor spoiler a, a warning this is at the very beginning of the game these people, you know that they're, they're basically come out of these cocoons at, like, the age of, I'm assuming, like, 12 or something, like, around that age, 13. Oh, yeah. um, and they've been together their whole lives, which is only, like, a short... They're in year nine right now, so they're technically nine years old, but they, 
they don't act like nine-year-olds. They act the appropriate age that they are, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. And like immediately they, they off... They kind of experience accelerated aging in general, but even at their yeah. oldest age, they don't look old. Like, they have smooth skin still. No wrinkles. Yeah. And immediately off the bat, it shows you that, like, um, these main characters, boys and girls, they'll just, like, get naked in front of each other. And it's, yeah. it's, they, like, they, like, don't even think anything about it. They all just, like, get in this bath together. I'm like, interesting. Like, that's just kind of interesting. Like, they don't even think anything right. of it. It, it, right. just, it just goes to show you, like, the, the, the life that they've been living. Like, they don't know enjoyment. They don't know sexual anything. <laughs> you know what they, I mean, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they don't know. They don't understand. They don't even think about it. Like, that's where they're at in their mind. Yeah, and, then, and, uh, and they don't draw any attention to it during that scene either. You're just, no, as I don't. As a player, you're just sort of like, okay. Yeah. Like, interesting <laughs> yeah it is yeah it is genuinely an interesting angle and that's that's it's another not thing weird like a lot of jrpgs would do on. too that's yeah all, sorry. They, they, they will they will rope back to that idea later and like in in smart ways i'd say in fact i think the funniest moment in the game is is tied to that idea and when it gets well, there, there a... you'll come back to me and we'll talk about it well the thing is i mean this is kind of another minor sp it's a minor spoiler like Later on in the game, they uh, they want to change their clothes, but there's new people around, not the people that they've known their whole lives. Different people. So then they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go change in the bush." Like they don't want to change in front of these people. Like I don't know, yeah. it's just funny. Right? Um, yeah, I forgot all about that. But yeah, I do love like campfire scenes and just like character development scenes. And and I like you were saying how this game actually takes the time to develop things. I'm I was Wild. I. I had played, um, what's it called, right before this, and it did a very, not a very poor job, but just like a, an, a mediocre job at doing, trying to do a similar thing to this game. What's the game? Uh, uh, it's escaping me. Um, Drive it. Uh, Tales. Uh, Tales of Arise? Yeah, the, the new okay. one. Yeah. yeah. So it does like a similar thing. You're introduced to a bunch of characters. It tries to make you care about them. But ultimately, I still don't really care that much. I'm like 12 hours in. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe it's, that could change a... with that game. Hey, uh, when 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 the new people are around, like you're saying in the game, is that like a nod to like them like losing their innocence, or is it more so that they're like developing? They're not used like, to other people, I don't think, like at all. Right, but but what 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 is that a nod to? Is that like referencing that their innocence is gone, or is that more so like that just being comfortable? Like, are they? Is that like more so like the relationship that it, they built with the people that they've come out of the co the cocoon with i think the people like the reason why they, they didn't care about the people who they came out of like the hibernation chamber or whatever it is is because they're basically like brother and sister i guess um but they're not but they that's that's basically how they see it so then when these new people were in, around they were immediately like shy like oh i'm mm. gonna go change over here like like all the all the guys were and then the girls were like what's up with them so they still don't i don't know like they still didn't really care but uh <laughs> It's also maybe just some weird Japanese stuff that, <laughs> that they're doing. Just a little, like, a well, tad. Like, I mean, like, I'm just trying not to get into, like, a lot of spoilers and stuff. But I mean, like... Yeah, I know, yeah, no, I no, mean, no. The, the basic premise of the game, though, is that there's two warring sides. And, like, basically, if, you're, if they're not... A, if you're okay with the people on your side, whereas the other side, well, usually you're just killing all of them. So if there's any situation where they meet each other there's going to be instant conflict gotcha yeah yeah like the whole concept of even talking to someone from the other side and not like killing them with a sword is is just like is, it's just like brand new to them so they don't even yeah. understand and the goal is literally to kill everyone on the other side it's not just to win they're supposed to kill everyone because they take the other side's life force to fuel like these machines they have and that's like part of the what the queen orders them to do. So yeah. like immediately born into war. Yeah, that's, that's literally that's the it. whole purpose. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. literally yeah. it. Interesting. And that's why they. That's why it was like pretty interesting. Like they, they all shower together and like bathe together because it's like they just go out and kill people together and they don't even see each other as like any type of like romantic interest at all. I'm sure we are the only podcast who has talked about this for this long because <laughs> I personally no, found well, it interesting. But well, uh, like, that's one of the things that is like, you know, not only have I started to like, I'm still playing Xenoblade Chronicles one 
and like have made right. you know good progress on it and like oh i hate that i like i like it because then i'm like oh i gotta go grind i gotta get i gotta level up this i gotta cap out all these <laughs> attacks and i gotta yeah. you know make sure that, that all my arts are up and then i was like oh shit i got new armor i was like okay who uh okay he doesn't have okay okay i got new armor here yeah, yeah. okay you got new gear and i'm just like gosh damn it i knew i was gonna do this there was and, you know but but it gives me a reference point it gives me like you know mary and i and uh john talked about and amber last week mm-hmm. you know that it just kind of gives you like you want to know what's going on even if there's like subtle reference to it later on mm-hmm. but yet i still have a huge case of fomo right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> well uh, like uh, John said in the chat, he's beat the game. And he said you really don't need to play the other ones to, no. to enjoy this one. Yeah, uh, but I, I, I will mention. I, I was saving this for the podcast. No spoilers, but at like almost the very end of the game, there's Easter eggs for the first two games that come really fast. And the Easter egg for the first game, kind of no big deal. But the Easter egg for the second one. It's only on screen for like maybe two seconds, so you can just like look away for get a drink and completely <laughs> miss it. But it is this crazy like this crazy lore event for the second game that you see this and you're like, what? So wow. again, like no spoilers, but it's like like there's a really easy joke I could make, but even that would be spoilers, so I can't. But just like. Don't let your eyes move away from the screen during the end of the game. <laughs> but, but yet, how many cutscenes did you skip? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Who knows what else I missed? Yeah, there's probably yeah, like I didn't dozens. Miss the Easter egg. This was the dozens. only one Easter egg ever. <laughs> <The very end. laughs> Turns uh, out, like every other character from the past games within the series, but I just skipped the scene. I was like, ah, yeah. this looks boring. Whatever. Yeah. All, all the heroes are like past characters. <laughs> that you didn't wow, know. Shulk, skip. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But I'm I'm but very yeah. curious to hear what people think of this XC2 Easter egg. It's 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 an it's interesting. Nice. Now I'm very interested to even see what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, it's... You would not or think not that a <laughs> two-second throwaway thing would be so crazy, but it is. Yeah, <laughs> that's exciting to be honest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I am like I'm into the game. Unfortunately, I just haven't had much time to play. I, I've been in one of those moods where anytime I'm gonna play a game, I don't have the, I don't know, like the strength, like the will to the stamina <laughs> to really sit down and take in a game. So I end up just playing like Halo online or something. It's just like. <laughs> Like busy work, basically. I'm just doing because <laughs> I'm just ready to 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 go to sleep, and I want to get tired. But uh, your brain's tired, man. But yeah, so I'm gonna definitely get get back to it soon, and um, I'm I'm excited. I'm 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 enjoying it a lot. I probably won't beat this game for like weeks, to be honest. Like John, you're crazy. You beat it in one week. Um, sometimes <laughs> I take a long time with these JRPGs. Yeah. Uh, I think this is like the most I've ever like committed myself to just get a huge game done as fast as possible. Because usually I would spend several weeks on this as well. It's just like uh, I wanted to get this done and out of the way. Well, I wanted to move on with life, even for as much as I enjoyed it. One thing I'm confused about is like people are saying the game is like you said, what like 79 hours or something like that. Yeah, with with some some skips. <laughs> And there's there's a uh, seven chapters total, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm and in I chapter only three. One of the heroes. I'm in chapter three, and I've only played like fifteen, twenty hours. Okay. So if I'm in chapter, if I'm like om- if oh, I'm, I'm sort of at the beginning of chapter three, so I've, I don't know. It, it, yeah. I just feel I like if at really this pace, big. at this pace, I feel like I would finish it in like forty or fifty hours, but maybe not. Um, it it mostly just depends on how much exploring you decide to do cuz like i yeah. spent like a good tump a good chunk of time just exploring that eastern desert in like the second area of the game that desert is enormous but it's also completely optional i don't think you have to go to the desert for like anything but it's maybe the largest single area in the whole game aside from really? like one thing later on so like yeah it really just depends there. on what you want to see yeah but um Eric also, I will say that be, um, chapter six. Back. All right, that's that's reasonable. Like chapter six is not that long, and chapter seven is basically just the end game. So that's really not that long either. Okay. Uh, so yeah, like I don't know, like chapters. 
I don't know. It's hard to say. Probably the middle of the middle chapters are the longest. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on from that, I have uh, one more game that I'm playing, and then I'm gonna throw it to everyone and hear, see what you guys are playing. I'm playing the most yep. random game on planet Earth. Are you guys ready for this one? No one oh, yeah. is prepared for this one. I promise <laughs> right. you. Okay. I'm playing Mass Effect Infiltrator for iOS. <laughs> <laughs> I got is, really I, excited, and then I was like, wait. <laughs> this is, no, guys, this is a full-blown third-person game that released, like, 12 years ago on iOS. And I bought it way back then, but my shitty iPod could barely run it. Because it's like, it's like a good-looking game. But then, years later, I go to download it again, download it, try to play it. It says... Your operating system isn't is it's it's too new. Like it's literally too new <laughs> to play this old game. So then I was like, what? I, I like it can't just play the old games. And so I was locked out of it completely until huh. I found an old iPad in my basement that we stopped using because you couldn't update it anymore. And all the apps sooner or later, it's like you you can't use YouTube, you can't use Netflix because the operating oh, system is yeah. too old. But mm-hmm. I went to the app store because you can still access all of it. Went to my purchases downloaded this game and i can finally play it so i'm playing it on like an old ipad and it's actually pretty fun but like what is it like what do you do it's like a linear shooter basically that's it like it has like a story but there's not much going on but there is um a character like early on mary that you would probably care to see in in it um archangel um (gasps) but uh (laughs) yeah so it's actually pretty dang good for a phone game like and, and i'm the iPad that I'm using is, it's a first generation iPad Mini, so I feel like the 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 iPad Two would probably still run be running the same OS, and it would run this game a lot better. So unfortunately, it runs a little crappy, but not horrible. Um, but it's 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 fun. Like I'm actually enjoying it, and that's totally random. And I thought I'd bring it up. So, John, what are you playing? <laughs> actually, John, you just talked a ton. Greg, what are you playing? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Um, so I haven't been playing much. I am on vacation. I was on vacation this last week, but you know, I did have, um, Great you know, I just want to touch on, on vacation. Like, yeah, nope. ever. <laughs> but I had some really cool experiences with, with, uh, this younger generation of, of gamers out there. Um, so I'm sitting on the plane and there's a, a mom sitting to my left of me with her two kids that are conked out, you know, fell asleep. So she's sitting there watching a movie on her, her, phone and i'm and sitting you're like, there hey baby how's it going <laughs> no john <laughs> Maybe. Um, Continue, so sorry. um no so it was like a three-hour flight and i was like uh, i was like do i fall asleep do i watch a movie maybe i should you know play my switch so i pull out my switch i start playing um xenoblade start you know just kind of running around and and doing some grinding um before i got to the boss battle that i'm currently at and then I see the two kids like look at each other next to me and they're about, you know, my nieces and nephews age ages. And they're about, I don't know, I guess maybe anywhere from eight to 12. And so the one next to me, she pulls out her switch OLED and cause they look at me and then they pull out theirs. And then, so she pulls out the switch OLED and then the younger kid next to her pulls out a switch light. And so, you know, I'm sitting there, you know, playing Xenoblade. They're both playing Minecraft. Then they switch it up. And then the mom starts to fall asleep. And I could tell that they're, like, kind of bored, like, looking over. And so I'm like, oh, you know, what what games are you guys playing? And they tell me. And then they're like, have you played Mario Odyssey? Have you played this? Have you played this? And I was like, oh, I love Breath of the Wild. And they're like, yeah, yeah, the shrines, the shrines, the shrines. And I was like, yeah, they're challenging. And then I was like, you know, did you get the Korok seeds? And they're like, oh, man. And I was just like, <laughs> so cool, like, to hear, like, that the younger generation is in very good hands. And I was like, have you guys played Kirby? And they're like, no, what's Kirby? And I was like, oh, I have, because I have a little Kirby um, um, keychain on my bag. And then and then I, I had, you know, played a... Uh, um what's the latest one the lost forgotten land Kirby. forgotten land forgotten land i yeah. even forgot what it was called but um so i was like oh I, yeah <laughs> and i showed them a little bit and they're like wow that looks so cool and then so you know i finally you know get to my destination and my nieces and nephews i was you know telling about it and they're all uh between you know playing the switch 
they still play their Wii every now and then. They still play games on their PS3. They have a PS4 and a PS5. Because my brother-in-law is, is about my age and my sister's just a few years younger. So, you know, they grew up with games in the house and stuff. But man, like, I play with my nephew and we're playing, like, Rocket League, playing Fortnite. And it's been a while since I played Fortnite. So I jumped back in. Um, you know, and he's telling me, like, oh, you got to get this and get this. And then they play together, you know, someone will be on the switch playing Fortnite, and someone will be on the console, other console on the TV. But majority of the time they're playing in the same party. And so my niece is parting up with my nephew and I watched them play and I'm like, what the hell? Like my niece is jump shotgunning people in the face. And I'm like, what? When did this happen? And she's they're like, oh, yeah, Nino. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm their godfather, and they're like, oh yeah, Nino, you got to splash the shield down and get the chug over here. Grab this. No, you need a DMR. You need to go get the AR over here. And I'm like, <laughs> how do you guys it. know what these terms are? Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I I watched I watched her kill like four people in a row, and then in real uh, life. then she was pl- <laughs> in real life and in the game, which is mind blowing. At the same time, so like it's funny because like she was playing with one of her friends, and you know it's two girls playing. And she's like, oh, my God, I'm knocked right now. Can you come pick me up? And they're like, oh, okay, let me get over here. Oh, get in the car. Oh, jump out of the car. Shoot the kid up at the top. Oh, yeah. And then, like, you know, they know of the game. But I think, you know, they're still, like, you know, don't don't have the, um, like, uh, you know, like vantage points or, like, you know, the the lead on, on a sniper shot. And I told my nephew, and I was like, I'll give you five bucks, you know, if you can knock a, somebody with a sniper. And, like, I, I ended up, you know, showing him how to, like, lead somebody and, and go for the head and not the body for more damage. And it was just, like, really cool seeing them play all this. And then at the end of one night, we all played Switch Sports. And it is still, hands down, the, like, best family game, the best, like, fun experience. And I hate that my mom does this, but every single time... She fucking smokes everybody in in bowling, and I don't know. Like, <laughs> she she never practices. They they don't even have a switch at the house. But whether it was on the Wii, the Wii U, or the Switch, she bowled like five six strikes in a row, and she just like gets dialed in. And but just to see like even my youngest nephew, I think is four or five, um, is just starting to come around like um, to like understand mechanics and stuff like got to understand like how to bowl like hold hold the buttons and not to let go of them but i just thought like all this was like just kind of cool to see like my family like come together and play but also like to see that my nieces and nephews are like understanding games that i thought would be too complicated for them and you know maybe it's just me like keeping my head down and playing the games that i play but it made me you know, my nephew had been asking, you know, for a while to reinstall Fortnite and jump on with him. And I'm like, good, maybe he could carry me through the match now. Cause <laughs> like, good nice. God. <laughs> yeah. But it was cool. It was, just, I, I really like seeing that, like, you know, this new generation of gamers is, is, you know, experiencing these types of games and, and, you know, they, they still, I mean, they were playing overcooked together, um, on the switch and PS4 and, and, uh, I, I just, I don't know. I, I I thought that like those types of games were out of their grasp, but you know, and even even my my little niece brought over. Uh, she was playing Fall Guys, and you know she didn't really know what was going on, but she at least you know knew what to do, and I thought that was cool too. But cool. that's what I've been playing: the family games. Aww. Nice. That's awesome. Um, speaking of families, my sister was over the other day, and her kids were playing Fortnite, just destroying people like way better than me. But I was like. <laughs> Man, like, literally every single time they're here, I've never not seen them play Fortnite, Roblox, or Minecraft. That's the, literally the only mm. three games they ever play. And that's... And then my other uh, nieces and nephews uh, came over, and that was all they played the whole time. And I'm just like, you guys have so many options. When I was a kid, I had to play the same three games all the yeah. time because we were broke and we didn't have Game Pass <laughs> and all these free games playstation plus games all these free like games on steam and epic or whatever and these kids they're just i mean i i I get it they're kids they're going to be a part of the cool crowd and play all the hip games but but man they have they have so much like they have so much at their fingertips that that they don't even utilize and it's just kind of sad but uh she was like brett you always played the same games when you were a kid i was like casey i had to 
I <laughs> had to. It wasn't a choice. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to rant about that. Just think it's kind of funny. Um, if I think, if if younger me told older me like you're gonna have access. Or if older me told younger me, like, when you get older, you're going to have access to any game you want to play, whenever you want to play it. it. Yeah, and you're going to get free games every month with your subscription. I would have, my mind would have been blown. Yeah. My face would have melted off. I would have been like, no way. That's not even yeah. possible. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mary, what have you been playing? So, I beat Resident Evil 1. Mm. Uh, Chris is already I'm officially done with that game. I sank a bunch of hours into Hades because it's my comfort game and I I don't know what else to play. But more importantly, I started Xenoblade 1. (laughs) Nice. Yeah. Now I have somebody to talk to about it. (laughs) I've played a whole four hours of it and it's destroyed my world already. (laughs) That's an emotional opening. I know what I know where you passed that. Yes. (laughs) Like, and I'm still processing it. I <laughs> had a feeling I was going to have feelings and emotions while playing that game. I didn't expect it to hit me that hard that early. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there like watching this event play out. And I was like, why am I feeling so many strong emotions right now? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't like this. I'm going to cry at some point. <laughs> but, but it's also doing the thing where like, when I get into a JRPG, I get into it. And so as I'm having like a bout of insomnia last night, I couldn't fall asleep. I was just laying there. I was like, I could be playing Xenoblade right now. Why am I not playing Xenoblade right now? If I can't <laughs> sleep, I might as well make it productive. Right. Um, <laughs> and now that like I'm at like the next part of the story, I'm like, should I have done more? Should I have grinded more? And I'm just sitting there like, did I make mistakes already? And I'm like, I shouldn't be thinking <laughs> like this. It's my first playthrough. I should just be playing to like enjoy the game. But yeah, I'm just yeah. sitting there like analyzing everything. Like, what should I do going forward? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I love it. I'm having so much fun already. Well, that's awesome. Great. I yeah. would say with the the first one, there's like, you know, there's like that giant web of relationships you know Mm -hmm. it's like crazy huge i'd say just like don't even worry about that that much like i think on rare occasions there are kind of i think like right and wrong ways to handle some situations but like Mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things it doesn't matter so just don't worry about it like i won't stress about that as much because yeah like yeah (laughs) the screen and of course like in the beginning there's only like a couple and i was like there's this thing's gonna be full at some point. I'm gonna be overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. So big, it's ridiculous. Yeah, like, like Brett, like correct me if you think of anything, but I don't, I don't recall that affecting the main story like whatsoever. I don't either. I don't yeah, think it does. So I, yeah, if if your core concern is getting like a extracting the full essence of the story, you have nothing to worry about. Okay. Yeah, Yeah. because, like, and at one point I was like, why do I need to trade with people? And then one of my friends who was watching me play was like, you don't need, he's like, I didn't do a trade until, like, three-fourths of the way through the game. He's like, you don't have to stress about that. I was like, Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, you (laughs) made me panic right now. I was like, am I supposed to be trading? Like, I just found out you can gift gift your own party bugs or vegetables. (laughs) (laughs) It's not uh, that big a deal. Okay. <laughs> now, if I'm rem- if I'm remembering correctly, I believe with like side missions in that game, you you want to just talk to everyone to trigger them, and then you'll yes. just complete a lot of yes. them like naturally. Okay. I love that so much. It saves <laughs> so much time from having to like complete the thing and then go back to the quest yeah giver. you don't you don't have it's to just go back like congrats you collected your fifth bug here's your experience <laughs> and i'm like yes yeah. <laughs> yeah, and auto cool. running is hey, hold on can i uh, yeah. grab so a pen good. and paper <laughs> <laughs> um, it throws a lot at you in the beginning like mm-hmm. it was just like yeah. here's They're a tutorial like here's that. a tutorial and i was just like oh shit yeah. i need to actually be reading these things <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so. it, it is a lot to absorb, but eventually you just sort of figure it out, and it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you're playing the Switch version, right? Yeah, Definitive Edition. Nice. the The character models of all the main characters look so much better in that one. Yeah, I you think. know if you're playing the Wii version. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Cutscenes um, are pretty. 
I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the music yeah. is so good. It's fantastic. Banger after banger after banger. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I was just sitting on the menu screen and it kind of had like that Kingdom Hearts opening vibe where it's just that really light music. And I was like, this sets a really good tone. Mm -hmm. I already really like this music. It feels familiar. So. I'm really, I'm really liking it. I've only played four hours of it, and I'm like, I need more. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good game. It's Definitely. mostly just two that I have like a big bone to pick with. <laughs> <laughs> two is like the, it, it has some missteps, but I still think, in like the core experience is still like really solid. Um, there are some things that are really gonna annoy you. You're probably gonna need like a guide for some sections where you're gonna be like, what? How the hell do I get into here? There's like specific move sets you have to have just to move forward in the main story or something like. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was it was like like certain like elemental attacks or something or a certain amount of knowledge in some area like where you have to unlock a door or something. John, do you remember anything like that? Honestly, no. But I, what, I, I I remember getting stuck a few times having to have like a very specific like I I had to go to the store and buy a bunch of drinks. So that I could be like a certain <laughs> level in a in a certain spot and like oh. go through a door. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, I, I don't I don't remember that part. I I remember like there's like a late game boss fight in two where I think you're on your own, right? And then all of a sudden you're fighting some people you don't expect to be fighting, if you know what if you remember what I'm talking about, Brett. You're on your no, own, I was and all of a Greg's message, and I didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a part where, like, you're all of a sudden you're on your own and doing boss fights against people you did not expect to fight. Do you remember what oh, I'm yeah. talking about? Sounds yeah. familiar. Well, like, I yeah. like I was able to beat it eventually, but like, it felt like a part to me where, like, if you hadn't like built up Rex the right way, that like maybe it'd be kind of screwed there. Like, it felt like weird to me like that like it could be a potentially game ending moment to me but. yeah because if you if you if you only kept one save and it, it like you couldn't go back that far you might be screwed. yeah yeah so mm. um but the first one's great glad you yeah. enjoy it yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i still really really want to play x like x i looks... want everyone to play x my like, friend has a copy for me yeah, that's great. Yeah. Visually, I still think X looks the most appealing to me. Like the the art that they use in it, and like the futuristic robot stuff. Like that stuff looks awesome. Um, like obviously these these games still have like mechs and robots and stuff, but there's there's, there's something about X that just looks really appealing. And I'm just hoping that they port it to Switch. Like I want it. I want to play it. Yeah, like it kind of feels like now would be the time for it. Like they said, they're going to continue the series, even though three wraps up the first three, kind of, sort of. So like, you'd think they'd want to do X2. And if they're going to do X2, you might want to show everyone X, because not many yeah. people played it. Mm -hmm. So hopefully. Yeah, I wanted cool. to ask this last time, but I didn't want to sound dumb. But where does it fit exactly into the story? It doesn't. It's its own well, weird all oh, thing. okay. <laughs> X X actually the premise of X is actually that Earth our Earth two warring alien factions battle each other and they just happen to do it on top of Earth and Earth gets obliterated because of the different aliens fighting each other <laughs> so huh. wrong you're place like, wrong time yeah so you're on an arc you're on like a, a like I think it's like a United States branded space arc that flies away from the exploding Earth and that arc like lands on another planet, and the whole game's about colonizing and exploring this new world for humanity. But why did so they that it can decide to do X out of one, two, and three, like within the same like? They just decided it was like a good time to do an adjacent story. Well, well they're they not made, really. They made X after the first one, so yeah. it wasn't. Oh, there, there was okay. no. There was no expectation that there would even be a Xenoblade Chronicles two. Back then, yeah. we just thought X like was the sequel. You know. Like, mm, this gotcha. is the next Xenoblade, yeah. So when they actually did announce Xenoblade Chronicles 2, it was, like, kind of surprising that, like, they just put a 2 on it. <laughs> yeah, it was... I didn't... I was hoping that they would uh, somehow majorly end up connecting all these games, but they're not, they're not really doing that. I think I do yeah. own the physical copy of X. Really? You do? Uh, yeah, I randomly bought it oh. along the way. Yeah. My just friend, I like, like, maybe I want to play it later. Yeah, my <laughs> friend saw it in a store because, like, I mentioned, like, getting closer. Like, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna like dive into the Xenoblade you know, series, and she saw it and was like, "Hey, do you want me to pick this up for you?" And I was like, "Yes, please." <laughs> <laughs>
Nice. So. Yeah. yeah, I just think that game looks so cool, and I've always thought it looked cool. And for some reason, I never bought it on Wii U, and I just feel like we're so close to a Switch port that I'm going to regret it if I buy it. Um, but apparently there was a uh, Elma character or boss of some sort that was in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 as like a DLC that you could buy for her to be a part of your team. But I don't think it's like story related. She, she's just like a blade. Yeah, that would be my guess. Like, I mean, like the worlds aren't really compatible story wise. Like, yeah, like, I mean, like. Yeah, no, I can't talk about it because then I'd be giving spoilers for the end of the first Xenoblade. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. I was about to just casually no. blurt out something that would completely destroy Greg and Mary's experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Son of a bitch. Oh no, it can't be this because da 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 da. So never mind. <laughs> All right, guys, this has been Spot Dodge, a live Nintendo podcast. It's been awesome hanging out with you. Greg and Mary, you can finally go back to sleep. So, so I'm so glad. So Mary will go back to rest. Xenoblade. Exactly. Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> Just look how good X looks. I can't stop looking at the visuals. They look better. They look better than than two and three. Like I think they do. Yeah. Um, it really, yeah, I like I can't explain it. Like I don't know if it's just like like the, the color filtering they did or what, but like it looks really like uniquely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, like it's more of like an actual earth tone palette, but like it works. Like I don't know. Like usually I do like things that are just like super vibrant, but like here this earth tone it really works. Like it does look more like like lifelike. Yeah, and then there's anyway. sweet giant robots. <laughs> yeah, sweet giant robots. <laughs> Mary, if people want to know where to find you, where can they go? Uh, you can find me here on the podcast every Tuesday. You can also find me on the Destructoid TikTok. And if you want to follow me anywhere else, I am also on Twitter and Twitch, Mary Wants a Cookie. Awesome. Greg, where can people go to find you? You can find me on Twitch, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, all with the at dynamite underscore giraffe uh, name. As well as over, you can see it on my Twitch or on my Twitter. It's just spelled a little funky. And you can also find my bylines over at PC Invasion when I do pick up news over there. And I'll probably be streaming soon the new uh, update to Apex Legends Surprise. <laughs> That's where I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> awesome and before i ask john where you, can, where you can find him one more thing i thought about x just now is that the combat is largely guns and i feel like just shooting guns makes more sense with with the style of combat that xenoblade is compared to just striking over and over you know what i mean yeah um, this one gives just, you the option to do both it's like awesome. two separate kinds of attack yeah i just I, I want that game anyway john where can people go to find you <laughs> Uh, well, you can find me writing stuff at The Escapist, but otherwise, I'm making my video game, Boss Saga, where you play as the bosses and beat heroes in RPG boss fights. And that's at, uh, I don't know, boss-saga.com? Yeah, boss-saga.com. <laughs> each website. Each, each week, I relearn the name and URL of my own website. But it's out there. Check it out. Boss Saga. Boss Saga. Saga? Saga? I don't know. Anyway. Saga. And if you want to find me, you can find me on the Destructoid TikTok, uploading videos every single day, some funny videos, some skits, all that stuff. And of course, every Tuesday night here on the Spot Dodge Podcast. And once again, if you want to go follow us over on Podcast Services, we're on pretty much everything. Please go over there, follow, give us a review, five stars. That would be awesome. And one more thing before I go, I wanted to shout out Halo Infinite. You know, it's fun. I play it every day. I don't care if you guys don't like it. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Also, thanks, Eric. Thanks, yeah, Eric. Thanks, Eric. I never shouted out Eric. <laughs> Damn it. I thought you thanks, were going to say Eric. Thanks, Daddy. <laughs> yeah. I never shouted out Eric. It is said I shouted out Halo Infinite. What a scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, I'm sorry. Dirtbag Brett. I was like, one more thing. Halo Infinite. <laughs> Halo. Yeah.